Another big problem, you define this, ADD and ADHD. Okay, before we really touch on ADD and ADHD, because we're now understanding that by not getting proper sleep, um, then it can result in dysfunction during the day. But let's back up a little bit. We talked about obstructive sleep apnea. Mm -hmm. We talked about complete blockage of the airway, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. Put that in this end of the spectrum. Put normal breathing over here and realize that there's a lot of things in between. Right. There are situations where individuals are going to have a narrower airway. They're gonna be working harder to breathe. Just by working harder to breathe, that can disrupt their sleep. Their oxygen level may be fine, they're not stopping breathing, but they're working harder to breathe. And that causes brief disruption. We call those an effort arousal, okay? There are individuals that will have this occur repetitively throughout the night and result in problems during the day, such as daytime sleepiness and fatigue or difficulty with concentration, okay? But it's not sleep apnea per se. It's part of the spectrum, it's a milder form of this breathing problem. And it frequently goes under the radar screen uh, by a routine sleep study. So a routine sleep tests may not identify these real subtle breathing problems. We now know that children that are not gonna get proper sleep at night may not function well during the day and they're gonna exhibit hyperactive behaviors and difficulty with their concentration. And the difficulty that the child may be having at night may be due to obstructive breathing. And sometimes the breathing problem could be as subtle as this upper airway resistance syndrome. So the child doesn't stop breathing. Yeah. but they're working harder to breathe. So when you look at your child, you notice that they're having some labored breathing. Maybe they snore, maybe they don't. Um, but they're having disrupted sleep, and that can result in their difficulty with their behaviors during the day. Another common problem for this would be restless leg syndrome. Children having this uncomfortable sensation in their legs, <clears throat> kicking in their sleep. So those are two common causes for ADD and ADHD. We now know that if we treat these children, then they don't need to have the stimulants during the day because they're getting better sleep at night and they're more focused during the day. With us now is Jessica Dorfour and her mother, Anna Jett. Jessica is a six-year-old girl with ADHD symptoms. She was having difficulties in school and Dr. Simmons diagnosed her with upper airway resistance syndrome and he had her treated with CPAP. Now, Anna Jett described the kind of problems Jessica was having before she was treated. She was not sleeping through the night. She was snoring, wheezing, bouncing off the wall, and having trouble in school. After going through the sleep study, Jessica was treated with a CPAP machine, which she wears at night. Now, Anna Jett, tell me what kind of a difference this has made. She's able to sit still. She sleeps through the night. She, um, she can actually sit in the car without bouncing off the wall. She can actually sit in my lap with not moving, but she's actually nervous, so. <laughs> but she's done a lot better. And now in school, she gets green all the time. She's much better. And the teachers have noticed a big change in her. Jessica, do me a favor. Show me how you use the CPAP machine. You know, it's really impressive to see a six-year-old child like that utilize a treatment device like the CPAP so easily and so effectively. You know, Doug, CPAP is just a temporary treatment for a patient like Jessica. Next thing to do would be orthodontics, where you could do palatal expansion or mandibular advancements, so when she grows up, she'll no longer need to use CPAP. You know, one of the...